So I'm Mike Evans. I'm here from Twitter to talk to you about uh, something very important to, I think, everybody, uh, emoji. It's probably uh, the most serious talk you're going to see. Uh, so uh, if you're not, if you don't already know how serious emoji are, uh, it's pretty much taken over everything on the internet. Uh, the, the Oxford Dictionary decided to make the word of the year uh, an emoji, the crying emoji. Uh, there, Sony decided that it would be a really good idea to make uh, an emoji movie, uh, which I hadn't seen, but apparently is not about uh, history of Unicode and text encodings. But uh, I will talk about a lot of that stuff today. So we're going to talk a little bit about the history of emoji. We're going to talk about uh, how, how Unicode works. We're going to talk about uh, emoji on Android and then talk about a little bit of uh, hacking around because who doesn't love to do that stuff. So uh, let's talk about the history. So in 1999, uh, there was basically all these feature phones. They all kind of had, uh, you know, you used the, like, the, the colon and the parentheses. And uh, some, some of these Japanese mobile operators like SoftBank, they, they created their own like proprietary emoji. And uh, this might, this might sound familiar, like you know, some devices, the emoji look like some, something, uh, other devices look like something else. But uh, this guy, uh, which I'll butcher his name, Sh Shigetaki Kurita, uh, created like this standardized set of emoji. There are 176 of them. Uh, there are 12 pixels by 12 pixels. Uh, the word emoji lean, means literally translated picture character, has any comparison like emoticon or anything, emotion is like just purely coincidental. And uh, what's pretty cool is uh, at the MoMA in New York, you can go check out. They have the original exhibit of all the original 176 emoji you can go see. Uh, so it's quite some time ago. We can fast forward a bit uh, to 2010. Um, and emoji were added to the Unicode spec. They became like a, a standardized thing. And uh, they really like kind of came on the scene in 2011 when Apple decided to add them to iOS, and that's when people started sending like a lot in text messages. Uh, and then in 2013, like Google, you know, like Android kind of does the emoji showed up on Android. Um, and the next, so the next thing that we want that I want to talk about is in 2014 when uh, Twitter came up with their own emoji set called Twemoji, and uh, they came up with them um, because. People were sending these the tweets on their phones, and they were you know when you go to browse the the tweets on the web, uh, they didn't you know you got these like these squares, these like, question mark boxes, and uh, web browsers and like the OS manufacturers for desktop uh, desktop OSs were not updating their emoji fast enough. So Twitter decided that if we create our own, we can show them in the browser, and everything will look like the composers uh, on mobile expected. So. We, added, we created this emoji. It was based off the Unicode 6.1 spec at the time. So we created 872 of them. Um, and the idea was pretty similar to the initial idea of emoji, like solving this inconsistency problem uh, that, that we had like 1999 on the web. And uh, I really want to show off uh, what some of them look like in case you haven't seen them, because they're created with like handcrafted, like loving details uh, that you might not notice on your phone. So. Uh, if you look at the, the bridge emoji, it uses the same color as the Golden Gate Bridge because uh, Twitter is based in San Francisco. Um, and if you happen to be in San Francisco, you may notice that the office building emoji is an exact replica of the office built, Twitter's office building uh, in, on Market Street. Um, the calendar is uh, March 21st, which is the date of the first tweet. Uh, the, the beeper, which people might not know what a beeper is any, nowadays. Uh, has the, the number 40404, which is the phone number that you could text Twitter before they had apps. You could send text messages to do your tweets. So uh, a lot of these like have very specific meanings. Um, and uh, we open sourced them in 2014 when they came out. And it's actually now the most uh, popular open source project at Twitter. And you can see them all over the place if, you, if you're looking carefully. So Domino's uses them. And, uh, and uh, recently, the designer tweeted out that they're actually used at the self-checkouts at Target. And you can see that the little icons are emoji. And if you look closely, you can see that there is no onion emoji. So they just use the crying face. <laughs> so maybe in next year, there, there'll be an onion emoji. Um, and so a little bit more emoji kind of trivia for you. Does anyone know? The, so the crying face emoji, like laughing crying face is the most popular emoji. Does anyone know what the least popular emoji is on Twitter, at least on Twitter? 
Anybody want to guess? No? Okay, well, I'll just tell you. It's the clamp. I did. So if you ever, if you ever have a use for it, you can know that uh, maybe you'll like bump it up in the rankings. Um, so anyway, fast forward, it's 2018. Uh, Unicode 11 came out. Uh, was, uh, I think first week of June, Twitter released the emojis to match. Uh, in Android Pie, we just got the, the new emojis, uh, like the Android ones. Uh, Apple hasn't yet to release theirs. Uh, so like actually for once, Android is a bit ahead of the curve. Uh, so now we're up to 14, 1,644 characters without the modifiers. There's like tons of new ones. Uh, but this is Drake in New York, so we all like want to make sure that we emphasize that there's a bagel and cream cheese. Um, so that's, that's a bit about emojis. So now we're going to talk a little bit about Unicode, like a little bit more technical, technical stuff. So Unicode standard consists of like a set of, set of these code charts and encoding methods, like standard, uh, standards for encodings, rules for like decomposition, collation. It's like a ton of stuff essentially to kind of handle text. Um, and the Unicode uh, supports like different types of scripts and different symbol sets for different languages, so, that, so it can all be done together. And there's like over a million code points. And so the part that we, as Android developers, care most about is like how do we deal with this stuff in in Java or in Kotlin? And um, you know, so in, in Java, everyone's probably seen the char type. Uh, it's a 16-bit value, so the max value is 65,535. And if you've worked on Android for a while, you might like recognize this number. And uh, I think two or three years ago, Jesse Wilson did a talk here at DroidCon New York and talked about uh, how um, how that, that that number is like the that Unicode is like the multi the multi dex of code of uh, has the um, cert, like sorry, just keep going. I'll explain it in a minute. But anyway, you should talk, watch his talk because he talks a lot about how Unicode works. And so uh, we have, so we can see the, we can see like a, how we might have a problem here with the sixty-five thousand issue. Where so if we we iterate over these characters in hello world, and we iterate and look at each char, and we know that chars can only be sixty-five thousand five hundred thirty-six. Um, we will run into a problem if, say, the world uh, emoji is larger than the value. So in this case, the world emoji is like one hundred twenty-seven thousand. So we iterate over them. What happens? And so we print out each of the things, and we and we get these like question marks. And so we don't really know like what this is. So in the Unicode spec, we have this concept called uh, surrogate pairs. And so this is what I was talking about. Uh, so Jesse Wilson, he called them uh, multi-dex for code points. And so it allows you to like kind of pack more data into a character essentially than you would be able to if you just use the char. So it's, it splits this data. Uh, the, le the lesson here is like don't assume that you can just use string to char at because uh, if you're dealing with text that has emoji in it or other Unicode characters, you, you might overflow it. Um, so the way we can fix this is pretty simple. There's a method called code point at and then that will point to the actual code point values uh, and then you can just increment the like um, the, like your iterator that way. And so when you, you switch your code to this, uh, it'll print like you expect. Um, similarly, uh, string that length is like similarly dangerous. Uh, does anyone want to guess what this prints? Like how long this is? Four? Say C4, C2? Uh, it's two. Jesse, like you shouldn't, you, you've, done, you've done your research on this. Uh, how, about, how about this one? Anyone want to guess? Yeah, it's also two. All right, how about how about this one? C five, C four. All right, some people in the back. I don't, I don't want to take your answers anymore. Uh, it's it's four. And then how about this one? No, nope, no, nope. it's eleven. And it seems like a just seemingly like random number, right? Like why why are they different amounts, different lengths? It has to do with uh, modifiers and joining. And so uh, there's this concept of something called the zero width joiner. And it's kind of like essentially the like and then. And so uh, if, you, if you see this, this, this code point, this 200D, it basically is saying like combine these two things together. And so you may have seen this like a few years ago when like skin tone modifiers were introduced in like Slack or something, where you'd see like the thumbs up and then you'd see this like weird square. Is essentially that the uh, the platform you're using didn't have the the like skin tone modified version of the emoji, so it was just displaying them as if it like as they were. So essentially, it's this plus. So you have this 
this thumbs up, and then you have the zero with joiner, and then you have this skin tone modifier. And so that's why you're seeing four. Two for the skin tone and two for the thumbs up is four. And so if you look at the family, that's actually comprised of a man, a woman, and two ch children. And so if you combine them. And so that's actually how like a lot of the professions work. So the female program is just a lady and a computer. Uh, you could see like we could conceivably mix like anything like this, but that, that's uh, kind of how it works. So uh, if you want to like make sure you're handling this properly, use code point count and don't use uh, string.length. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's Unicode stuff, uh, but we're going to talk a little bit more about how emo using emoji on Android. So if you've ever had a phone that was like didn't get updates right away, you probably have been razzed by your like iOS toting friends uh, about like how they you know they're sending you stuff you can't see or whatever. Um, people on Twitter are very like vocal about how they handle their emoji. So this guy really doesn't like how the Samsung emoji laugh, the uh, laughing Samsung emoji works, which they're like really ugly. Uh, if you've seen the genie meme that's been going on, there's this tweet that I really liked. Uh, it says you have three wishes, make everyone an Android user, and it's just a bunch of tofu squares. And I, there's like a zero percent chance this sound works, but uh, if you watch, if you're a fan of Brooklyn Nine Nine, there's this like everyone has felt this Captain Holt moment. Oh, please, sound work. Well, it's got subtitles. So, so we've all felt the like Captain Holt moment where like someone sent you something, but you don't, you didn't like quite get the meaning. So luckily uh, for Android developers, uh, last year when Android O came out, we got um, like downloadable fonts and, and uh, emoji compat. And the idea behind emoji compat was to kind of handle this that it would be a backported support library to handle uh, rendering emoji. And so. It uh, came in two flavors. There's a bundled version, a downloadable version. Most people probably use the downloadable version. Uh, it makes more sense to not have to like bundle a font with your app. But uh, the bundled version is worth mentioning because we might we're going to talk about it a little bit later. But uh, it's really useful if like your app doesn't have access to the Play Store for some reason. So um, this talk's not really specifically about uh, implementing Emoji Compat. Um, so we'll kind of breeze through the configuration. But it's pretty easy if you want to use the bundled version. You just Create the bundled version uh, in your application config, and you initialize it. Um, if you use the downloadable version, and if you've ever used the downloadable fonts SDK, uh, it's pretty similar, except for you use a, a emoji compat with this font request. Um, you then you set it up, and then you just use initialize emoji compat like that. Uh, and then in your layouts, you can then switch from using text views and edit text and buttons to the emoji versions, emoji text view. Uh, and then uh, everything kind of just works. Like just, you don't see those things anymore and like your, your sub renders uh, nicely. So uh, you should definitely check that out if you haven't and you like handle stuff from user, most user input because people want to use emoji. So uh, I thought this was really cool. Uh, I thought it would be interesting to see um, if we could use it for Hack Week Project at Twitter. So. Uh, Twitter, obviously, people use emoji a lot, and there was uh, quite a few attempts to use like various open source libraries to implement um, one emoji rendering in general, and then two like we want to use Twitter's specific emoji in the app. And so uh, for Hack Week a few months ago, I was digging through like old old uh, patches and old Jira tickets, and people like spent a lot of time trying to figure this out, and like couldn't couldn't like get a solution that we liked. We didn't like a lot of these open source libraries where you use like base classes, and we couldn't like use the you know default like edit text stuff. Uh, we had to use like custom input methods like create your own keyboard which seemed like a lot of nonsense that we didn't want to do because we were not going to install a keyboard. So once we saw uh, emoji compat I thought like maybe there's a way, maybe there's a way we can shim the Twitter emoji instead of the Google emoji. So uh, kind of went on this path of like reverse engineering how emoji compat works. So uh, when it, it kind of kind of breaks down to the three pieces that we need to like look at. So the first was the rendering. Like how does how does emoji compat render emoji? Like how do they show up in the text? Uh, how what does the configuration look like? Like we saw the bundled version really doesn't have any configuration. Uh, the um, downloadable version kind of has like some magic. Uh, how, how does that work? 
Uh, and then like, how are we gonna put the Twitter font in instead of the Google font? So let's like look at uh, each of these pieces uh, one at a time and then we can kind of see how they work. So the first thing was about uh, the rendering. So we looked at, so I looked at emoji app compat text view and um, inside that, the class is pretty simple. It extends app compat text view and has this emoji text view helper and it doesn't really do a whole lot on its own, but it like has some hooks into things like uh, updating transformation methods. So we're gonna, so we're gonna, then we decide, okay, we got, so the secret sauce must be in there somewhere. So inside there, all it does is kind of wrap the transformation method that's on the existing text view with this emoji transformation method. So like we're, we're definitely like kind of following where we want to go. And you follow like these abstractions until you find this emoji compat get a process. And uh, when you, when you, Digging through how the emoji processor works, it basically takes the uh, Unicode characters and converts them into something that is called an emoji span. And so, uh, then what is an emoji span? So emoji span is a is just extends replacement span, which is like a very old class that I had never heard of. Uh, it's a parent class of image span and it allows the uh, span to draw the emoji directly onto a canvas. So. Basically, uh, we don't really need to touch any of this. Like, this is fine. We want to let the system draw, like, the thing. We just want to replace what's being rendered with uh, what we want. So uh, the next thing we was looking at uh, was, like, how, how do we configure this thing? Maybe the hook that we want is in the configuration. So uh, the, the downloadable version doesn't really work for us because that has some like hooks with play services and we don't have like access to all that stuff. So the next like most logical place was to look was inside the bundled version. And conveniently that's in AOSP. So we can, uh, we can just open up the source code of the bundled one. And uh, there's, there's very little code there. It just basically starts a new thread and then like runs some code like this where it opens up your asset manager and then reads this, this asset into a metadata repo and then just says like, okay, we got it. So this, this seems pretty promising that we will be able to do something with this. So we, uh, so we basically just need to use this as our hook. So the, the last piece was around uh, like loading a font. Like what, what, is, what is a font? Like I've never made a font. Does anyone, anyone seems like a very, I think you just download from the internet or something. So how do you create one? So the first thing you can do is you can ask a designer friend. That if you have one of those, it's very helpful because they, they probably already know how to do it. Uh, another place you can look is uh, Google, uh, the Noto emoji, the emoji that you see on Android is built in the, uh, on open source. You can check out the repo on GitHub uh, where how they create theirs. But conveniently, I had a designer who was working with me, so they, they made the font. So you think, okay, we just, we just take the font, we put it in the assets directory, we change this, bundle configuration, we run the app, like we should be good to go, right? No, not, not quite. Works on uh, new versions of Android where they have like uh, support for this stuff, but old versions of Android wasn't working. And spent some time like digging on the developer docs and talking to Samid and I found that this very, very small footnote that is like kind of probably intentionally hidden about how uh, this works. And there's this extra metadata that's added to the font in a special table that allows uh, emoji about to read it and then render the stuff. So, uh, you know, what, what do we do with this information? Then there's not really anything more. Uh, so we, we go back to AOSP and we, we do some sleuthing and we find like the, we search for like the, where, where Google's got their emoji stuff and we, we find this emoji compat and it, we find their font. And so we, we start looking and trying to figure out like what, what is the format of this table? Like what, what do we need to add to our font to make this work? And uh, if you ever tried to open a font, it's just a binary file, so there's not like a lot of discernible information. Um, but there's conveniently some tools that Google has released called TTX, uh, and there, there's quite a few others in this repo of font tools. And it allows you to dump a true type font into something that's like a little bit more human readable. So if you run this command, you get this XML file that's like crazy long uh, with like out, you know, tens of thousands of lines, but essentially like all the information that you need to render different things according to the true type spec is here. And so we can find these tables uh, that have the information that we need, uh, but conveniently inside AOSP, there's also this create font.py script, which probably is not intended for people to use outside of Google. Uh, but it does do what we want. It adds this metadata to these like CBDT, CBLC, tables that 
are part of the Unicode spec that, or the TTF spec that I didn't bother learning about. Uh, and so you basically can just take your true type font that worked on Android O and, and P, uh, and you can run this script against it, and you pass in like the Unicode data that you need, and it'll essentially add the, uh, the emoji metadata that, that you need to load it. And so when you run your uh, app now on um, newer versions, of, on all versions of Android, you should be able to see, or everything is supported by emoji. Now. You'll be able to see the Twitter emoji. So I um, think this is something that uh, there's a few other emoji vendors, like Emoji One are probably trying to do something similar. So like this technique should work for you if, you're, if you have your own emoji that you'd like to see rendered. Um, hoping to get this open source very soon if people would like to run, uh, render the Twitter emoji in their own apps, just like maybe Target does. Uh, and I know I went through like this pretty quick, but uh, now I can take any questions. And if and I have stickers, tw emoji <laughs> stickers. <laughs> you don't have to ask a question to get a sticker. You can just come up after. <laughs> Sorry, can you? Oh, like consistency. So the question was like, what do I feel about uh, kind of having consistent emoji when you send it on one platform versus the other? Yeah, uh, I think that came up quite a bit when we were launching uh, to emoji on Android because people wanted to like remain consistent with what's on the platform. Um, but there are like kind of slight differences and we kind of wanted whatever you see on twitter.com to appear on like what appears in the apps. Um, it is a little kind of jarring, I think that, you know, Something you may type in your keyboard doesn't look exactly like what shows up in the composer, uh, but it is an option to just turn it off if like, you really feel strongly about the uh, Google emoji. Yeah, Jesse. Sorry, what? Oh, you, do you wanna, if you wanna customize the input method? Um, so I think that if you customize input method, it should just work as expected. Like the emoji compat just kind of handles the, the rendering. So whatever um, like code point sequence, you, if it can handle it, it will render it. I can't hear you. Yeah. You'll see the Twitter. Yeah, if you type a one in from the Google keyboard, it will show up as a Twitter one. We just do like the re the replacement. I think that's just how the emoji combat stuff works. You guys can have stickers for asking questions. <laughs> um, I know also like lunchtime's starting around now, so be if you guys want to uh, get out early, then this is very convenient. 